we are going to have example after example of steam tables in this video. Hopefully you'll find it helpful and it'll help you understand how to choose which table, which conditions you're operating under. All right, let's get started. What we've got here is we're going to have water. And in each of these cases, we've got some properties given to us and we want to find the specified property. We're also going to locate our state on the TV diagram. Okay, so let's get started. Part A, we've got a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius and we've got 0.5. Okay, now looking at this, we don't really know anything about pressure here. We want to find pressure. So in order to find pressure, we got to figure out what's going on. So the way we're going to start this out is let's draw this diagram. So here's our TV diagram. Let's click like that. And now let's draw a constant pressure line like that. We know we are at 140. So what you're going to do is you're always going to start out going to those saturated water tables. So the table A2 and A3 that I showed you earlier. In this case, we've got temperature. So I'm going to use the temperature table. Okay. And the reason why we're going to start out with that is because we're going to compare our values to what we find in this table. So if we go to 140, here's the temperature. Look over here. The pressure has to be 3.613 and VF is going to be the 1.0797. You need to divide that by 1000. And the specific volume in G is going to be 0 0.5089. So we need to label all of this stuff on our diagram. So let's go ahead and put all that on here. So if this is at 140, this point, that was VF. That was the 1.0797 times 10 to the negative 3. And then over here at VG, that value was 0 0.5089. And we know the pressure associated with this temperature is going to be the value that was in that table. So 3.613, and that's bar. So all of this information was obtained from that table using the 140 degrees Celsius. Now we have this specific volume of 0.5. So what we need to do is we need to figure out where we are at the temperature of 140 because we don't necessarily know that we're on this line yet. Okay. We could be up here or we could be down here. The way you're going to figure that out is you're going to take your V number that you're given and you're going to compare that to VF and VG. So our V is 0.5. That lies in between these two values. Right? So that means if it's 0.5 and this is 0.5089, we're pretty close over here. So that's where we're located. Okay. So since we are located here in the liquid vapor mixture at this temperature, that means we've got to be on this pressure line. So our pressure has to be 3.613. So that is our answer. All right. And again, let's write down, because we know that V is greater than VF, but less than VG, that we've got a liquid vapor mixture. If we found that our V was outside, like if it was greater than the 0 0.5089, we would need to switch to a different table. Okay. We would need to find some more information or if it was less than VF, we would need to find something else. Okay. But for that one, we got a liquid vapor mixture. Okay. And this again was from table A2 in the Moran book. Now let's go to part B. So part B, we've got a pressure of 30 megapascals and we have a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. We want to find specific volume. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is let's start out by drawing our dome. It looks like this. 
So that's V, this is T. Now we've got a temperature of 100. Okay, and we've got this pressure of 30 megapascal. So let's label 100 right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look and see what my table says. Okay. So my table says that at a temperature of 100 for a liquid vapor mixture, I need a pressure of 1.014. All right, now he had already told me my pressure was 300 megapascal. So even in bar, if you were to put this in bar, that's 300 bar. Okay, so those two don't match up. So essentially what happens here is, remember your pressure is gonna go up as we go this way. What we wanna do is let's figure out what our max pressure is. Because 300 bar, that was a lot higher than the number that we found in the table, which was 1.014. So let's find the critical pressure. And this will kind of give us an idea of where we are. So the critical pressure is gonna be 220.9 bar and that temperature is 374.14 degrees Celsius. Those are from table A1, remember. Now, if this pressure at this point is 220 bar, then we're at 300 bar. That means our pressure is somewhere over in here. Because remember, your pressure increases as we go this way. So your ISO bars as you move up and to the left are gonna increase. So if this is our pressure line, we want to find the intersection of the temperature where it's 100 and that pressure line. So we're right here, okay? So this is to the left of the vapor dome. So this means we've got compressed liquid. Now, we've got compressed liquid. You need to go to table A5. That is the table that we have for that. Okay, great. And let me get to that table. Okay. So here's A5. Now for this, we've got a temperature of 100 and a pressure of 300 bar. Okay, so here it is. So this is the compressed liquid table. Here's our pressure, temperature 100. You come over here, this is specific volume right here. Okay, and this is one of those where you gotta divide by a thousand. So our V value, which is what we're looking for, is going to be the 1.029 times 10 to the negative three, that's cubic meters per kilogram. All right. So this would be your specific volume. So basically what you're doing is you're taking the information you're given and you're going to compare it. This is how I always do it. I always compare it to what's given in the liquid vapor table. And then from there, I can tell if I need to switch to a compressed liquid table or if I need to go to a superheated vapor table. All right, but I always start with that liquid vapor table first. Next, let's go to C. In this one, we've got a pressure of 10 megapascal, a, temper a temperature of 485 degrees Celsius. We're gonna find V again. All right, so we've really increased the temperature from this last one and we've decreased the pressure here. So first things first, let's draw the diagram. All right, now, Okay, so to get started, let's look at our table. I'm gonna use table A3, that is the pressure table. 
and it tells me I have a pressure of 10 megapascal. So let me draw a line representing the isobar for 10 megapascal. Now if we go to the table, 10 megapascal is 100 bar, so we need to convert over to bar. Here is 100 bar. Now this temperature, it says, is 311.1. Right, so those go together. So now if I look on this graph, remember this is temperature, this line right here is at 311.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I've got that. Now if you notice, it says our temperature is 485. Okay, so that's not here. And that is a higher number, so we're up here somewhere. Now what I need to do is I need to find the intersection of this temperature and this pressure. So what you have to do is just basically draw a line over here. This is where it intersects, right there. Okay. This is to the right of the vapor dome. So that means you've got superheated vapor. And now you'll go to that superheated vapor table to find the information you need to get specific volume. Okay. Now, that table is going to be table A4. So let me get table A4 out here. And for this one, you need to find the pressure that you've got. So here's the pressure we have, and our temperature is 485. Now let's look over here at our temperatures. We don't have a 485. We've got a 480 and a 520, but we do not have 485. So you're going to have to interpolate to get the values you want. Now you're going to pull out these values right here, and that's what you'll use for your interpolation. So if we write that out, we're going to have, let's put it over here, we've got T and then let's have a V column. So we're going to have 480 and then we got 0 0.0316 and then at 520 we've got 0 0.03394. So these are our surrounding data points. These are what we're going to use to do our interpolation to get V. Now, to do the interpolation, you'll just have 0 0.03394 minus 0 0.0316. Put that over 520 minus 480. And then this next side on the right, you'll have V, that's our unknown, minus 0 0.0316 over 485 minus 480. Then we just solve for V here and V, you get 0 0.0319 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay. So again, we went ahead and we started with that liquid vapor table. We figured out what temperature went with this pressure. We noticed our temperature was a lot higher, so then you just look for the lines where they intersect. And then that tells you basically which table we need. Now, if our temperature would have been 100, we would have been way down here. So we probably would have had compressed liquid, right? So that's kind of how you use those tables to figure out if, you're got, if you've got compressed liquid or you got liquid vapor or you have superheated vapor. Okay, let's do one more of these and then we'll stop this video and then we'll have another video of examples after this one. Next, we've got a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, a quality of 0.75. We want to find V again. So let's start out by drawing the dome. So it looks like that. There's our pressure line. Now our temperature is given as 80 degrees. So I'm going to start out using the temperature table for saturated water. Okay, so this is it right here. Table A2. Our temperature was 80, 
So our pressure here is 0.4739. Let's write that. And this was 80 degrees, like that. And now we have that. Now we were given quality. Now just looking at quality, you should be able to tell what you got. Do you have compressed liquid, superheated vapor, or liquid vapor mixture? Can you figure it out? Now remember, quality tells you how much water vapor you have in your system. So if you're at 0.75, that means you're in here somewhere okay so just due to the fact we were given this quality we know we have a liquid vapor mixture and using that we can find v okay. so again just to re-emphasize it at this point right here x is zero over here x is one and inside of here you're going to be between zero and one so we were between zero and one, so we know we've got a liquid vapor mixture. We want to find V, because we don't know what our V is. The table is going to give us VF and VG. That's what the table has in it. If we look at it, see VF and VG. So we're going to pull out those data points, because we're going to need them. So we got the 1.0291, we need to divide that by 1,000, and then we get 3.407. Okay, so let's write those down. And let's put them over here. So VF is 1.0291 times 10 to the negative third. VG is 3.407. And those units are cubic meters per kilogram, like that. Now we've got that. Now you got to remember how to use your quality to find V. We had an equation that we went over where we could use quality to find specific volume. So if we look at that, our equation was V equals VF plus X times VG minus VF. We've got quality, we've got VF and VG. So all we have to do is plug in those numbers. That will give us our specific volume at these conditions. Let's do that. So you get 1.0291 times 10 to the negative third plus 0.75 times 3.407 minus that 1.0291 number. You solve and you get a specific volume of 2.556 cubic meters per kilogram. And that would be your answer. And if you wanna locate your state on here, because we're supposed to do that, we're at 0.75. If this is at one, we're kind of three-fourths of the way over. So I'm gonna say we're right here, roughly. All right. Okay, hopefully that was a good start to our examples. We're going to have some more in the next video. And if you're still not sure how to do this, hopefully the next video will clear that up. All right, guys, you guys have a great day. I will see you all later.